Welcome back to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Farzana Hafizula. Joining me today is Dr. James Abram from the Cleveland Clinic. Great to have you back. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So we know you were recently involved in a very interesting project evaluating the benefit of neoadjuvant chemotherapy in patients with invasive lobular breast cancer. How do the clinical characteristics of invasive lobular breast cancer tend to differ from those of invasive ductal breast cancer? So about 10% of breast cancers are invasive lobular. So 80 to 90% it could be invasive ductal. So it's a small subset of our patients. Um, all, we always feel like it's an understudied topic. You know, we need more research in, in this area. So uh, if you look at the clinical characteristics, in general, they can present as fairly large tumors, sometimes multicentric or multi, you know, multicentric tumors. And in general, they are estrogen receptor positive, and, and most of the time it's HER2 negative. So large tumors, multicentric, ER positive, and there is an concern about increased bilateral um, presentation too. So those are the unique thing. And then uh, one of the diagnostic challenges, there is a chance that we can miss lobular in mammogram. So in general, we tend to rely on MRI to um, identify the exact size of the tumor. I see. Are there any notable biomarkers, perhaps, between the two groups that can help us, maybe, in differentiating? Uh, sure. And uh, I mean, the, the common things, of course, the ER and PR and HER2, and then e uh, is an important biomarker which distinguishes uh, lobular versus uh, um, uh, ductal. So clinically, the challenge is lobular uh, tend to be, as I said, estrogen receptor positive, and sometimes it's grade 1 or grade 2. Um, so they respond less to chemotherapy. Um, so let's just say if we have a large tumor um, in, in, in our conventional wisdom, we tend to give uh, chemotherapy, but we know that lobular respond less to that. So that's a challenge. See. And, and they respond nicely to uh, endocrine treatment. So the question is how do we optimize treatment for lobular um, using some of the new agents? I see. So is there a diminished response as well to neoadjuvant therapy? Right, right, in general. Okay. Now, aside from the pathologic characteristics, what other factors should be considered when clinicians are considering neoadjuvant therapy in this patient subset? So, uh, again, uh, the size of the tumor, um, um, is it multifocal, multicentric, um, or bilateral? then, um, of course, the ER, PR, and the grade of the tumor. And if the tumor is uh, a low-grade tumor, strongly ER, PR positive, uh, even if the tumor is large, um, the chance of that patient responding to neoadjuvant chemotherapy is less. Um, um, and so, even though endocrine treatment, neoadjuvant endocrine treatment is not a standard practice, um, in some patients, we should be able to consider neoadjuvant endocrine treatment. And then, uh, based upon the, uh, the, the PALET study, which is presented here, um, it's really interesting to see that CDK4-6 plus endocrine treatment can substantially reduce the proliferation, or okay, KI-67. Again, it's not ready for prime time, but um, looking at endocrine treatment plus CDK4-6 uh, could be an option for, um, and if, could be a potentially a future sure. option you know, for uh, lobular cancer in neoadjuvant setting. So it's promising. It's really promising. <laughs> That's right. great to know. Right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Abram, for joining us here and for sharing these vital details with our audience. We appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you again for joining us for this edition of Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Prasanna Hafizula. Join us soon.